What's up, future respiratory therapists? Hey, in this video, we're gonna be talking all about I to E ratio. I've got a practice question for you here. When I'm just gonna tell you what the answer is, I'm gonna to explain to you why the answer is the answer. Let's dive in. All right, so let's jump in and talk about this question. Remember, we're gonna be breaking down a practice question, but it's really all gonna revolve around I to E ratio. Let's look at the question here. The question is, a respiratory therapist is completely completing a preoperative function test on a mechanical ventilator attached to an artificial lung. The ventilator is set as follows. You've got settings here. The therapist is unable to achieve an intended I to E ratio of one to two. What is the primary reason for this. Then we have our answers. Excessive tidal volume, faulty artificial lung, use of peak, insufficient flow. Now you get to pause this right now and choose what you think is the best answer to this question. When I look at this question, there's a couple things that jump out at me. First of all, I've never done a preoperative function test to test if the vent is going to give 800 mLs, rate of 20, and establish an ID ratio of one to two. That sounds more like biomedical stuff to me, but nonetheless, we do oftentimes perform system tests to make sure that the pressures are held, that there's no leaks, that the filters are not causing any type of flow impedance and things like that. So we do perform preoperative tests. I just don't know if I've ever seen one or done one like this. Now, when we look at this, there's something that jumps out at me, and that is the question is asking about I to E ratio. And I'm just gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna go out on a limb here, and I'm gonna tell you that anytime you're looking or breaking down a question that is related to I to E ratio, if you have to completely guess, guess flow. Because, again, 90% of the time, it all comes down to, are we delivering the correct flow to establish the correct I time to establish the desired I to E ratio of one to two in this situation, okay? So, pretty certain I already know the answer to this question. Let's break it down though and see really how to answer this question and understand what this question is asking. The real question here is, is what I time is needed to achieve the I to E ratio of one to two? You see, the problem is, is that we don't have the right I time. That's why we can't get a one to two. So we're gonna to have to change something. Right off the bat, anytime you're asked this question, you can mark out FiO2. It has nothing to do with I to E ratio. P has nothing to do with I to E ratio. Now these other three, tidal volume, rate, flow, 100% directly related to I to E ratio, and we're gonna to have to keep them in play. So how do we answer this question? Step one, what is the total cycle time? How do we get total cycle time? It's very simple. Total cycle time is the completion of one breath, all of inspiration plus all of exhalation. How long does that last before the next breath is coming? Well, when you tell a machine to deliver 20 breaths a minute, it's going to do that equally over one minute, which is 60 seconds. So simply divide 60 by 20 and we see that our total cycle time is three seconds. Now this is gonna be important because that is going to serve as the box that we're going to be operating in, okay? So, the st so step, step two takes us down the road to say, okay, what inspiratory time is needed to achieve a one to two ratio. Now when it says one to two ratio, you have to recognize what that's saying. That is saying, I wanna spend, for every one part I spend in inspiration, I wanna spend twice as long in exhalation. Okay? So we're gonna basically have three parts here. One part, inspiration. The other two parts are going to be exhalation. And, we have three seconds to do that in. So all we have to do when we recognize that we have three total parts is we just have to divide our total cycle time by our parts. This is total cycle time, this is parts. When we do that, we realize that one part 
equals one second. What does that mean? That means that in a three second window, if you're gonna chop that up into equal parts of three, and you're gonna spend one of them in inspiration and two of them in exhalation, then that means you're gonna have a one second eye time and a two second expiratory time. So we know right now what we need. We know that our eye time we need is going to be one second. If we have one second inspiration and three seconds total cycle time, then that leaves two seconds for exhalation. That's a one to two ratio. We're spending twice as long expiring as we are inspiring. Okay, so it brings us to step three. So to achieve this one second eye time, what flow do we need? Now for this, you gotta know how to calculate flow. We know that flow equals tidal volume divided by eye time. Now, remember, we're trying to figure out what is the flow. This is the question. What flow do we need to get that eye time? We know what that eye time needs to be. It needs to be one second. So all we have to do is come over here and say X equals tidal volume. X equals 800 divided by one second. This is going to be very critical right here, okay? Because you have to make sure your units are all in sync. So we have flow is going to come out in liters per second. Tidal volume currently is in milliliters. Our I time is in seconds as well. What we're going to see here is that we're going to have a discrepancy when we try to go from milliliters to liters. So what we want to do is we want to change this tidal volume. We want to change this to liters right off the bat. So what we get here is 0.8 liters. 800 milliliters equals 0.8 liters. And now our units of measurements are all matching. We're talking liters and we're talking seconds. So this is good, okay? Now when we do this math, we see here where, let me clean this up for you just so you can see what we're doing here. You see here we do 0.8 divided by one. That equals 0.8. Guess what that means? Remember, X equaled flow. So our flow is 0.8. But when you get this, remember this is in liters per second. So, what, okay, Joe, so what? Well, look, we talk about flow in liters per minute. So all we have to do is turn this 0.8 liters per second into liters per minute. To do so, we say 0.8 liters per second times 60 seconds equals 48 liters per minute per minute. And that brings us back to our answer to step three, that is we need 48 liters per minute to deliver 800 mLs at 20 breaths per minute to achieve an ID ratio of one to two. Let's go back to the question here. All the settings back here what is the primary reason that we cannot achieve this I to E ratio of one to two? Remember, we know that we need 48 liters per minute, but we are set on 40 liters per minute. There's a problem. This is why the one to two is not being achieved. The answer here is insufficient flow. I already told you the use of PEEP. PEEP has nothing to do with I to E ratio. The faulty artificial lung, nothing to do with I to E ratio. It may have something to do with a leak if you can't get a return volume back. Maybe you have a, a faulty artificial lung, but other than that, no. And it's not an excessive tidal volume because we are testing this tidal volume. Okay, so it's not a tidal volume. The problem here is we don't have an adequate flow, which I told you, 90% of the time, I to E ratio questions, think flow. 
This is what we're talking about. Anytime you were talking about and learning about total cycle time, you have to recognize that you're talking about all of inspiration and all of exhalation. That's what you're talking about. This right here is your I to E ratio. To calculate this, it is so vitally important that you recognize that in conventional modes of mechanical ventilation, we are in control of inspiration. And exhalation is passive. So we, we can't really control what happens here. What we can control is what happens here. Now, we can change the total cycle time, and that will change our expiratory time. But other than that, we don't have any direct way to control expiratory time. All we have is to control inspiratory time, the inspiration side of things. Once you recognize that inspiration comes down to this triad right here, inspiratory time is the byproduct of flow and tidal volume. You say, okay, Joe, but it's not always like that because on some ventilators, on some vents, I actually set the inspiratory time. Okay, well you recognize where if you set inspiratory time and you set tidal volume, then flow now varies based off of that. And if we want to go a step further and say, you know what? I set inspiratory time and flow. Then your tidal volume will be the result of that. These three elements right here, you have to understand how they interact with each other and recognize that these are the three elements that establish the inspiratory phase. Okay, so that's I to E ratio in a short amount of time as I can possibly do it in. This is where you can contact me. I'm on all the socials, Instagram, TikTok. Would love for you to come follow me. Any of those, Twitter, Send me an email at respiratorycoach at gmail.com if you have any questions over this. I would love to clarify them for you. And then feel free to send me a text at 817-968-7035. Join my texting platform where I send out occasional inspirational, motivational, educational content just to help inspire and, and bring this community of respiratory therapists closer together. If you like this video, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notifications, like, leave a comment, share it on every site that you can. It would mean so much to me if you would do that. At the end, average is easy. Don't be it.